Hi, everybody. This is uh, Silvio Canto in Dallas, Texas on Wednesday, uh, May the 16th, and welcome to our video commentary. You know, there's a very interesting article that uh, was available in Political uh, this morning uh, from uh, a gentleman. His last name is Cohen. And he's talking a little bit about the frustration of some of the people who worked in the Obama administration and the frustration that they're having that so much of their legacy is being basically canceled by President Trump. Now, just a little background on this before, before I go any further. Usually, uh, when you have an administration, the people who worked in the administration, either the cabinet members or some of the people who were part of the administration, often become the spokesmen or the salespeople for the good things that the administration did. And that's because usually the president uh, doesn't get involved in that day-to-day -day politics. He doesn't do that many interviews. So what you have is these people, the secretary of state, uh, the attorney general, and so on and so on. They, in a sense, become the salespeople or the spokesmen uh, for uh, the past administration. They often write books. That's another thing that they do. They'll write books and explain and develop some of the things that happened. The problem uh, that these individuals are having, whether it's Secretary uh, Kerry or whether it was Secretary Clinton or some of the other people who were a part of his administration, the problem that they're having is that so much of the Obama legacy was built by executive pin or executive agreement rather than by a law passed by Congress. For example, Lyndon Johnson passed uh, some great legislation through the Congress, the Civil Rights Act, the Housing Rights Act, uh, all of those, but they came through the Congress, so they are part of his legacy. That is what he did as, uh, as president. And you can agree or disagree with it, but it, was, it is part of, his, uh, part of his legacy. The problem with President Obama is so much that of what he did was not done that way. It was done by executive pen. Now, Obamacare was, in fact, passed through the Congress, but that's falling apart for other reasons, not because... Trump is deleting Obamacare. He can't do it anyway. It's got to be done through Congress. It's falling apart because it's falling apart because it was never a sound uh, proposal to deal with health care. But so many of these people are having a problem. One of the biggest problems they're having, of course, is with the Iran nuclear deal, whether it's Secretary Kerry. Another problem they're having is with DACA. And they're just this one after another of so many of these things that we identify with the Obama administration that are being deleted by his successor, President Trump. President Trump has an executive pen, too, so he can scratch what his predecessor did by executive pen. It's one of the great fallacies of governing by executive pen, that if you're followed by someone from your own party, you might get away with it. But if you're followed by someone from the other party, then you're going to have a problem with it. And that's, that's the situation. That's what's going on here uh, with President Obama. So obviously, the people who worked for him are having to spend all their time explaining or defending uh, stuff that was never actual legislation, that was just uh, an executive agreement, like the Paris climate change or DACA or the Iran nuclear deal. Now, I can certainly understand the frustration of these individuals, but it's hard to feel sorry for them because they had to know, they had to know that what they were doing was not correct. They had to know that the Iran nuclear deal should have been sent to the U.S. Senate for a treaty. The irony for me, for me, is that if President Obama had sent the Iran nuclear deal to the Senate for a treaty, he would have walked out with a much better deal. The Senate would have rejected the deal that President Obama signed, but the Senate probably would have written a better deal, a deal that would have passed the Senate and a deal that would have been a lot better for the United States and in the end would have been a lot better for the Obama legacy. So that's, for me, that's the part that I don't understand, why this, these, these people like Secretary Kerry and some of the others didn't trust the Constitution and the tools provided in the Constitution to do these things. That's the part that, frankly, confuses the heck out of me, why they didn't trust the Constitution. I understand they didn't have the votes to get the, Iraq, the Iran nuclear deal that they eventually signed. I understand they didn't have the votes to get that deal, but they could have gotten a much better deal by a treaty, and at the end, Obama and Kerry would have ended up winning because they would have been the ones at the, at the treaty uh, signing ceremony, for example. So they would have gotten, uh, you know, the blessing of history that way. But anyway, I think the moral of the story or the lesson of the story is that if you're going to govern in the United States, you've got to do it with the tools of the Constitution. And that's the lesson that the Obama administration 
never learned, and hopefully future presidents uh, will learn that lesson, that if they really want to have a legacy, they got to do it the right way, not by simply uh, signing agreements with other countries that are not, uh, are not uh, constitutional, as they say. Well, have a great day, everybody. If you're having a birthday today, happy birthday to you. We have all of these uh, videos over at YouTube. We have them on Twitter, and we also have them on my blog. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great day.